skinny axle and a big hole, plenty of room to plenty of room to bounce around and fit in there. I don't know. Hey guys, I'm Elliot. This is Everything Elliot. And today we're gonna be starting the project of making a lawn roller. If you're anything like me, you're constantly driving stuff through the yard, creating ruts and what have you. Springtime is a great time to roll your lawn because, well, it's wet. So what I have right here is some sort of well water tank. I don't know if it's a holding tank or something. I got it off Facebook Marketplace for cheap. This is a great start. You can find these on Facebook Marketplace, Craigslist and stuff like that. But basically, it's a giant cylinder. Unfortunately, this one isn't made out of metal. It's some sort of like plastic or fiberglass or something. But we have to start with getting it all taken apart. We have to take this end off of it and get this pipe off of it down there. Then we'll be able to build the structure around it. I don't have any steel for it, so today we're just gonna be working on getting it apart. I'm gonna go on Facebook Marketplace and find somebody that has some steel drops and get some cheap steel. That was easier than I thought. There's still some water in here. It's probably why it's so heavy. All right, let's go take a look at the other side and see what we need to do to get that off. That was obviously the easy one. So I don't really know how this big plastic piece comes off of here. It seems pretty rigid, but there are pipes coming out of here. So I feel like if this does like 90 degree turn spin off or something like that, we need to get these pipes out of the way. So we'll work on that first. Man, none of this stuff is, none of this stuff is really tight. got some gnarly cobwebs on it. All right, so this has got a warning on it that says this tank is pressurized, do not remove or loosen this fitting under any circumstance. Well, I believe this may be a circumstance that we are going to loosen this fitting. I don't, obviously, I don't think there's any pressure in it because I took the pipes off of it. I don't know. I don't see how there would be any pressure in it. So I'm gonna grab my dead blow hammer and maybe try to give this a couple whacks to try to start to spin it. My brand new dead blow hammer. Okay. That's it, huh? This is interesting. So we have a maybe two and a half inch hole over here and only like a one inch hole on the other side. And there actually is another fitting here. Let's see if I can get that piece off so we have the same size hole on each side. There you go. So it was my original intention to fill this with water and uh, I still might because this is something that I have a lot of friends that like to borrow and stuff like that and I'm okay with that as long as they take care of my equipment. If I fill this with concrete, they won't be able to borrow it because I won't be able to get it anywhere. I mean, you would have to pull it up on my trailer with the tractor. It, it would be a pain. So I think what I'm gonna try to do is, is to keep the idea of filling this with water. Now, the issue I have is this does not have a secondary hole on either side that you can fill with. You're gonna be using this hole for the bar that's going to be running all the way through the center. And my intention with that is I'm going to go get some fittings like this, obviously not plastic, I'm gonna get some steel ones. I'm gonna match this and it's gonna be the same thing. So what you'll be able to do is you'll end up screwing this in here just like this and then the, the metal uh, rod that you buy is gonna be the diameter of this. So that way you can slide the pipe through on both sides, the pipe will be sticking out, and then you'll end up welding right here along the pipe and this metal fitting that you're gonna have here. 
Then you come to the problem of, well, I need somewhere to fill it up. What I think I might do, I'll drill a hole somewhere, you know, up here that will be off the, off the rolling edge of this thing. And then I'll get another fitting like this. And then you'll thread this in here as best as you can. And what I'll probably do is I'll probably end up using like JB Weld epoxy or something like that to bond the two plastics together. And then you would simply get a cap for this. That'll plug it up. That way you undo this cap, put your garden hose in there, fill it up, and then tighten this cap down. So the next step for me is going to be getting some metal. And basically I'll need a piece of rod to run all the way through the center. Now that's very important, especially if you're gonna be using a plastic tank, you want your rod to run all the way through the center. If you, let's say you just do this, you know, you put this in here and then you just get an eight inch piece of rod out here, you're gonna be putting a ton of pressure on this joint right here. Because when you go to turn, it's gonna be putting pressure on this. If you run the rod all the way through, it's gonna equalize the pressure on the rod rather than on this joint here. Now, I have no scientific proof for that. That's just how mechanics work in my head, how I see it working. Well, I'm gonna go check Facebook Marketplace, see what kind of metal I can find for cheap. A lot of companies have drops and stuff that they sell for you know 75% off what you get them buying brand new. And that's where I'll be getting the metal for this. So I'll catch you guys in a little bit once I get my fittings and all my metal and we move forward with this thing. So I've got some PVC fittings here that this is going to be where I put the water in. Obviously there's not a hole here already, so we're gonna drill a hole. And we're gonna hope JB Weld is gonna hold it into here. I don't know what this is, some sort of plastic or something. I'm hoping JB Weld's gonna hold it. We're gonna put plenty of JB Weld on it to make sure it stays. So basically, you got your hole saw. It's going to fit. Uh, this is the closest one I could find. I was hoping for something a little tighter so it would you know, kind of screw in, but that's all I got. So we're just going to uh, drill a hole in this thing. I don't know, maybe somewhere like right about there. Cause I don't want it sticking high enough that the cap is making contact with the ground. So probably right about there. Oh, this is a lot thicker than I thought it was going to be. I guess that's a good thing. It's really thick. It's quite a bit of thickness there, and it's a hard plastic it looks like, so that'll be good. We're gonna, I'm going to get some acetone, clean everything off real well on this end, because I want to make sure the JB Weld sticks to it really well. Uh, and we're just going to lather some JB Weld on there. So I'll get it all cleaned off, get some JB Weld mixed up, and uh, I'll be back with you guys in a couple minutes. All right, so we got the JV weld on there. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go make some more and just make sure these edges are all sealed up really nicely because this has gotta be watertight. So we wanna make sure it's nice and sealed. Now don't be afraid to use this stuff. It's cheap, comparatively, to all the rest of the stuff that we're gonna be using, so. Get out of here. You're gonna get JV Weld all over you. Well, this certainly isn't gonna win any awards for being pretty. Get out of here. You're gonna get JV Weld all over you. If I didn't mention it already, make sure you keep all this stuff out of your threads. And I think that is gonna do it for us.
All right. So that's gonna have to dry for the next like 72 hours. So I still need to get the fittings for this and the metal. And then uh, once I get the metal, we should be able to build the frame and this thing should be pretty much done. So it's a couple days later. I've got my metal. You can see I've got my axle bar there. I've got some channel, some angle, and some more channel. Here we are, this is all dried up, nice and secure. So we'll be able to fill right there. Let me show you what I got going on to put the axle through here. So that is inch and a quarter axle bar. It's a 10 foot section. I don't need 10 foot, but that's what they had. This is a two and a half inch to one and a quarter inch reducer. And then I have another reducer that's one and a quarter to one inch because one inch thread, the outside diameter is almost one and a quarter. And the axle doesn't fit through here. So what I've done is I've taken my angle grinder and ground the threads out of it. And once you grind the threads out of it, once it's nice and smooth, the axle slides right in there. So I still got to grind this one. You can still see the threads in it. And then once I do that, we'll be ready to throw these on each side and throw the axle through it and see what that looks like. Wow, that's hot, very hot, very, very hot. Do not touch. Let's go check it on the axle. Nope, doesn't fit yet. Well, almost. So the back side fits. Just gotta get the front side to fit. Go do some more grinding. This has gotta fit now. All right, it fits. Do you guys want to see? Do you not believe me? I'll show you. See, told you it fits. Just a little die grinding. That's all you needed to do. All right, let's go throw them in the uh, in the barrel. So I'm just gonna thread these in here for now, just because I want to get a length on the axle so I can cut it and make sure everything works before I permanently install them. When I permanently install them, I'm actually gonna smear some JB Weld on this. That way I get a mechanical bond between the plastic and the metal. So we'll just screw it in there for now, like so. So we've got that side on there and the other side on over here. We should be able to get the axle in there and see what that looks like now. So now that we have the axle through here, we can pull it to where we need it and cut it off. Obviously it's way longer than I need it.
cut. We gotta get this cleaned up though. Because that's no good. All right, so I put a little bit of a chamfer on it because when we go to, we gotta pull this axle off because I see it. Well, I guess we're committed now. I gotta prime all this. Because there's gonna be water in here. This needs a little bit of protection. All right, with the axle out, I'm gonna go set this aside somewhere, give it a couple spritz of primer on it. That way it's protected from the water. So we've got the axle primed here. We've got two coats of primer on it so far. You can see no prime, prime, it's drying. And in the meantime, I got my welder set up with some 035 wire, and we're gonna to try to weld these together. We wanna to get this bushing locked into this bushing. And I think these are cast, and I know cast doesn't weld very well, but that being said, we're not building a bridge here, so we just need to make it sticky. We'll do our best and uh, see what happens. certainly won't win any uh, any beauty contest but it'll hold and that's all we need so that is locked in there I'm gonna get the other one done all right number two is done again not gonna win any beauty competitions but I'm nothing better than a farm welder so I'm gonna let these cool down now, they are mighty hot. So this is really starting to come together and I'm getting pretty excited about it. Obviously we still have a lot of framing to do around it, but you gotta get the axle in before you can do any of that. My only concern is there's no stop on these or the bushing, so I wanna make sure these have a nice mechanical or chemical bond, whatever you'd like to call it, and that's what I'm gonna use JB Weld to hopefully bond the metal to the plastic because the axle and the and the bushings need to stay static to the roller if either of these spin inside that's no good because i'm putting a bearing on the outside so if we get a nice bond in here with the epoxy or the jb weld then we should be good to go all right so here's the plan i'm not going to put the bushings in here yet because this, since this is the exact size of the axle it makes it really hard to, to makes it really hard to find the hole I don't know what else to say. There's no better way to put it. So I'm gonna take the axle, put it in here in the big hole, skinny axle in a big hole, plenty of room to, plenty of room to bounce around and fit in there, I don't know. And then I'll slide the bushings on and we'll put them in. Oh boy, oh boy. There we go, got it through. It's a little filthy in there still. So now, we should be able to slide these on, like so. Go put the other side on. Now what I need to do is mix up some JB Weld, so I can put some JB Weld on these threads, because I don't know of anything else that will bond plastic to metal. It's not like you can weld it, so that's all I can do, that's what I'm gonna do. Hopefully it works. Don't be afraid to use this stuff. Like I said, it's cheap. You gotta make sure you get a nice bond. I don't even know if it's going to work, but I guess we'll find out once I go to use it. Okay, I guess we'll let that side go and we'll, uh, we'll go do the other side. Okay, let's get this twisted in. I'll 
do the same thing we did on the other side and just schmoo it around. I don't know if that's going to do anything for us. All right, that side's done. So this is where we're at. JB Weld is drying right there. Um, I've got this out. Now, the axle is also going to be static to these bushings, so that means I need to weld the axle to the bushing. However, since the JB Weld is drying, I don't want to heat it up too much, but I also don't want somebody to come in here, accidentally bump this axle and knock it out. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the welder, throw a tack here, throw a tack on the other side, just so it stays put for the time being while that dries. And listen, don't judge me for my ground strap. I bought this welder used and it looked like that when I bought it. I really should get a new one. That'll work. I'm gonna go do the same thing on the other side. So we got a nice fat tack on there. That should hold the axle in place so it doesn't accidentally get bumped and moved. So besides welding, the axle in, the, this part is done. I just need to throw some welds on there. That'll be simple, that'll take me about 10 minutes. I just need the epoxy to dry before I can do that. In the next video, I'm gonna be showing you how to make the frame. Well, that's gonna be it for today's video. I hope you enjoyed getting my homemade roller set up. Everything to do with the roller is done. And like I said, the next video, we're gonna be building the frame. It's not gonna be bad. There's gonna be a lot of cutting, a lot of welding. I might break out the torches. I'm not very good at cutting with torches, but this is a perfect opportunity for me to give them a try. Again, we're not building a bridge here. I like to learn. It's easier to learn on my own stuff than other people's stuff. And if I want to get better, I need to practice. What better stuff to practice on than stuff you're building yourself? I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope you learned something. I hope this gives you the motivation to try something yourself. Don't forget to subscribe, and I'll catch you guys on the next video.